On August 11, 2008, in Fort Thomas, tragedy struck the seemingly idyllic life of 24-year-old dental hygienist Sarah Widmer and her 27-year-old husband, Ryan. Little did they know, their peaceful evening would spiral into a complex tale of suspicion and mystery. As they watched TV and enjoyed a cozy night at home, the events that unfolded including a shocking discovery, conflicting stories, and a subsequent murder trial painted a perplexing picture. On the night of August 11th, Ryan and Sarah Widmer enjoyed a simple evening, watching TV and indulging in extra hamburgers, corn on the cob, and cheesy potatoes. Ryan says they started with some of Sarah's favorite TV shows and then moved on to a football game. After that, Sarah took a bath. Ryan thought she asked him to check the doors before going upstairs together. Sometimes, she walked on her toes up the stairs after saying, I love you. At 10.49 p.m., Ryan called 911, saying his wife passed out in the bathroom at their home mentioning, My wife fell asleep in the bathtub. I think I was downstairs. I just came up here, and she was lying face down in the bathtub. Ryan told the dispatcher that he had been watching TV downstairs and found Sarah lying face down in the bathroom when he went upstairs. He said that she often fell asleep in the tub. After getting Sarah out of the water and learning how to do CPR, Ryan did what the dispatcher told him to do. He put the phone down for a short time while he filled up the tub and raised Sarah, which took about 29 seconds. Six minutes after the 9 to 1 1 call, the cops arrived at his house and found Sarah lying on the bedroom floor without any clothes on. Her hair was wet, but her body felt warm and dry. As the cops tried CPR, they saw a pinkish white foamy discharge coming from Sarah's mouth and nose, which meant she was drowning. When the doctors got there, they tried twice but failed to intubate Sarah in her bedroom. The ambulance then made two more tries during the 10-minute trip to the hospital. Even though the fifth attempt to intubate failed, the sixth effort by the hospital's emergency room doctor was successful in the end. However, it was too late, and Sarah was declared dead that same night. Rand told the cops that he and Sarah were home alone that night. He said that around 1 a.m. he watched a football game on the TV downstairs while Sarah took a bath. In order to show his worry, he told the cops that he thought she might fall asleep in the tub. Ryan said Sarah hadn't fallen asleep in the shower before, but he mentioned she sometimes dozed off in odd places. When the cops arrived at the house, they were suspicious, even though Ryan told them that he found Sarah asleep in the bathtub. They saw that Sarah's hair was wet, but her body was dry. Detectives thought Ryan's story did not make sense especially the part about the 9 to 1 1 call where he said he found Sarah lying face down in the tub. Concerns arose because of a possible contradiction. They thought Ryan had told the hospital nurse that he found her lying face up. During the check of the Widmer family's home, police found a number of problems that made them even more worried. The towel on the floor, the bathroom floor, and the bathroom mat were all dry. There were a few drops of water around the drain, but the bathtub itself was mostly dry. The house did not have any wet towels, which is important to know. Police found more problems with Ryan's story that did not make sense. Ryan told them at first that he was downstairs watching a football game with the Cincinnati Bengals while Sarah took a bath, but there was no sign of that station on the TV downstairs. The TV in the bedroom was instead set to the channel that was asked for. Cops also found blood on the bedroom carpet, which is where Sarah was lying when they got there. These results made people even more suspicious, and they added to the growing list of problems with Ryan's version of what happened that night. Warren County Coroner Dr. Russell Updegrove did the exam on Sarah. The results of his investigation showed that Sarah drowned and died. The exam showed that she had a protectile hemorrhage on the inner surface of her eyelid, bruising on the left side of her neck, a contusion on the back of her neck, an abrasion on her left armpit, and bruises and cuts on her upper lip. Sarah had cuts and bruises on her head and deep muscle bleeding in the front of her neck. Dr. Updegrove came to the conclusion that Sarah's death was caused by murder. Ryan was caught on August 13, 2008, just two days after Sarah's death. He was charged with aggravated murder. The case for the prosecution was that Sarah drowned and died. There was no question about what killed Sarah, but there was a question about how she drowned. The crime scene 
and Stara's injuries all showed that Ryan killed her. The main point of their fight was that she said he held her underwater against her will, which is what caused her to drown in the bathtub. As part of their probe, the police dusted the bathtub to look for fingerprints. They found streak marks that looked like they were made by hands, mostly in the middle of the tub. They found finger marks and smudge marks by using a superglue fuming method and reflected ultraviolet imaging. Another thing that was found was a forearm impression on the bathtub. Hair follicle testing showed that it was made by an adult man. However, it was not possible to say exactly when the impact was made. Additionally, the prosecution said that the fact that the bathroom was not wet did not fit with what Ryan had said. The floor and other things in the bathroom should have been wet when Ryan pulled Sarah out of the tub after she had drowned. They told the jury that Sarah's body was dry when the cops arrived, just minutes after Ryan called 9 to 1 1. The prosecution told the jury a story that suggested there was a fight in the Widmer home that fatal night, but the jury still did not know what happened. To back up their case, they called in an expert witness who said it was very unlikely for someone to fall asleep in a bathtub and die without being drunk or using illegal drugs. According to this account, a person would usually wake up when they felt water on their face or their gag reflex went off. If that did not work, a drop in oxygen levels would do the trick. The prosecution asked Mr. Updegrove, who did Sarah's autopsy, to give his professional view on what happened that night. He said that Sarah's body being dry and her hair being wet could have been caused by her head being pushed over the edge of the tub or sink. This act could have happened either forwards or backwards, in running water or underwater. According to the prosecutors, Ryan killed Sarah by holding her head under water on purpose until she drowned. Therefore, the defense said that there was not enough proof to back the claim that Ryan had killed Sarah. They talked about how much the couple seemed to love each other and said that Ryan had no good reason to hurt Sarah. The defense said that Ryan's friends and family had never seen him get angry or raise his voice. The couple's friends said they were happy and thought they were making plans for a good future together. In order to improve their case, the defense did their own autopsy, likely to question or offer a different view of the results given by the prosecution's witnesses, especially Coroner of DeGrove. According to the defense, Dr. Werner Spitz did a second autopsy on August 15, 2008. Even though he agreed with the result that Sarah drowned and died, Dr. Spitz had a different opinion about how she died and said he would have said it was unknown. He saw wounds on her neck, upper lip, nape of the neck, skull, liver, and head. She was also bleeding from her neck. It was impossible for Dr. Spitz to say for sure if these injuries were caused by CPR. In response, he said he would not consider her death to be a murder. The defense said that there would have been proof of a fight if there had been one. It was especially noticeable that neither Ryan nor Stara had any cuts on her nails. The defense also brought up the fact that female DNA was found under Sarah's toenails, but no match was found. It was their opinion that Sarah's injuries were most likely caused by the long CPR and multiple tries to intubate her that night, both inside the house and in the ambulance and once she got there. For the defense, they said that Sarah's death might have been caused by something medical, like a seizure or a heart problem. They also explained why Sarah's dry body and wet hair seemed to go against each other, saying that skin dries faster than hair. In the first trial, the jury found Ryan guilty of murder, but not of aggravated murder. But after a few months, a new trial was set up because the defense had raised issues. It turned out that some jurors had done their own tests on how long it took them to dry off after a bath, which could have affected how they understood the data. Unfortunately, Ryan's second trial in May 2010 did not reach a verdict as the jury could not come to a decision. In January 2011, Ryan's third trial began, which included new proof. But the state fought back by calling their own medical experts to question and disprove the defense's claims. The evidence from Sarah's co-workers gave us more information about her health and daily life. They talked about how Sarah would sleep in her car before going to work in the morning and do the same thing during her lunch breaks. Additionally, her co-workers said that she had allergies and had headaches and stomach aches. At least once, her headaches were so bad that they made it hard for her to see, so she went to a dark room until the pain went away. A dentist at the office where Sarah worked, Dr. Benjamin Nesmer, 
took the stand and said that he was there when Sarah died. He remembered that she had said that day that she had a headache and an upset stomach. What Sarah's friends said about her showed that she often fell asleep in strange places, like during a game or in the middle of a group talk. One of her friends thought she might have narcolepsy because of how serious the situation was. Narcolepsy is a sleep disease that causes people to be too sleepy, experience sleep paralysis, hallucinations, and sometimes have episodes of cataplexy. Ruth Ann Stewart, Sarah's mother, testified for the prosecution. She said that there was nothing out of the ordinary about the way her daughter slept. Sarah did have headaches, but Ruth thought they were probably caused by problems with her sinuses. Ruth said that she talked to Sarah on the day she died as Sarah was walking home from work. Sarah did not say that she had a headache. Ruth made it clear that no one in her family had ever had seizures, heart disease, or heart issues. Sarah had a cleft palate and a heart murmur when she was a baby, but a physical exam record from June 2008 did not say that she still had a heart murmur. Also, there was no sign of any heart problem, neurological problem, or illness in the report. Jennifer Cruz's statement was important and could have been very bad. Her claims say that she called Ryan while he was in jail after seeing an episode of Dateline about his case. She said Ryan called her on October 26, 2009, and he admitted to killing Sarah. Jennifer said in court that Ryan told her, I did it. I did it. I killed Sarah. I did it. Jennifer also said that Ryan told her about a heated fight he had with Sarah in their living room about his alleged cheating drinking, smoking, and pornography. According to reports, the fight got worse upstairs, where Sarah told Ryan that their marriage was over. Jennifer said that the argument got physical and Ryan said, nobody leaves me. Nobody ever leaves me. And I mean nobody. Jennifer's testimony got darker when she talked about how Ryan supposedly admitted to being violent. Jennifer says that Ryan admitted to hitting Sarah in the chest during their argument, which made her fall and hit her head. Ryan said he had passed out, and when he woke up, he saw Sarah on the floor with wet hair, not moving or breathing. Even though this shocking news came out, Jennifer kept talking to Ryan after their first chat. She did not tell the cops about the telling conversation until after Ryan's second trial ended in a mystery. In answer to Jennifer's testimony, the defense tried to make her less trustworthy. They showed proof of her past problems with prescription drug addiction and misdemeanor theft convictions to make people question what she said and why she was doing it. The defense put forward a difficult situation, saying that they could not say for sure what happened that night that caused Sarah to drown. The defense asked the jury to look at all the evidence and stressed that Ryan did not seem to have any reason to hurt Sarah. Even with these defenses, Ryan was found guilty of murder and given a sentence of 15 years to life in prison. One of the jurors in the third trial pointed out that Ryan's behavior in court was a big reason why they found him guilty. A jury member said that Ryan did not respond when autopsy pictures were shown in court. This juror thought that Ryan's lack of emotion affected how guilty he was seen to be.